Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And it's just pouring down rain today. I keep putting off doing a garden update and I really can't get out there and do much. So this is going to be my garden update for the week and I'm gonna shoot it in here because it's just too wet outside. I did manage to get outside and shoot a couple of little video clips that I'll talk about here. And uh, it was it was drizzling, but it's raining harder now. So. I'll start with on the deck. I have, if you remember, on the right on the corner, right next to the shop, I have a tall, skinny pot where I'm growing beans and peas in. And you can see they're starting to do just what I had hoped they'd done. They would do, and that is go up and, and climb up that little light, that flowered light that we've got there, and up the chains and around the uh, hanging pot, and then across the uh, chains that I put on there. So it's working its way across. When I took that video clip, which I'll probably have it loop here, I actually already had picked the peas off of there, the big ones. And there might have been one left when I shut when I shot that, but uh, I'm gonna be making a dinner tonight, a stir fry using the snow peas, so I got out there and picked them while I could, could without it being total downpour. So it's, anyway, that's coming along. I'm really happy with how it's looking. I do have a shot I took real quick here, standing under the grapevines and showing just kind of an overlay of the of the bigger garden area out, out back here. And then um, out front, the, if you remember last week, I transplanted some, well, it was really only a few days ago, some sorghum, the broom sorghum, and some amaranth, and uh, it's doing good. It kind of, you know, looked a little wilty for a couple of days, but it's coming back. It's looking healthy. So I think, you know, in a couple of weeks, it should really be putting on some size. The zucchini is doing really good. I see some fruit growing on there. I didn't actually get any video or pictures of the zucchini, but... Um, it's, it was just too wet to try to get in there and do that. And then my valerian, <laughs> the valerian is coming back and looking real healthy. It's it's uh, uh, getting little flowers on it. I'm sure it won't get to be eight feet again before the end of the season, but I'm okay with that. At least I got some video clip of it when it was that tall. And we can see that having it chopped all the way down to the bottom didn't kill it didn't hurt it any and it's just doing great and my elderberries are taken off i've got just lots of elderberry flowers on there tons and tons and i'm thinking i might go ahead and harvest some of the elder flowers and then uh and dehydrate those i'm it's really a debate because i also want the berries but i've got quite a bit on my on my shrubs out there so it's looking really good so anyway i'm going to go ahead and turn the camera around and i'll show you what's going on here in the greenhouse all right as far as my tomatoes i'm really not getting hard i'm hardly getting any ripe ones but i'm seeing lots of clusters this is how the uh Rio Grande aromas grow and this is why I like them so much. They're a more compact plant. They don't get near as tall as you can see those ones over there, how much taller those ones are. And this is me trying to keep them from getting too tall, which I haven't been keeping up on enough. But the Rio Grandes tend to stay shorter and they grow in, in thick clusters of tomatoes. And there we go. You see that? And down here. And so this is why I like these, and this is why I also planted them here in the south side of the greenhouse, while the taller ones I let grow on the north side, and then on the east side here. So here are the Vernissages. They are the first ones to start getting ripe. I've got a couple of ripe ones, a little teeny tiny one and one here, and so I'll be picking these. And oh, another one up here. I've been picking a few of them and they are pretty tasty. I'm real happy with them. They are exactly the size I thought they would be. I just didn't, I didn't think they were gonna be a very big tomato, but that's okay, I'm fine with small tomatoes. It's flavor and the total amount that matters to me. The uh, black brandy wines are starting to get a little size to them. There's a couple down here. Be a while yet before they're ripe, but I've got quite a few growing there. And you can see a couple of my Chinese five color peppers doing okay back there. And I've been, uh, this might not look great, but my stevia and my um, holy basil is doing pretty good. So this is actually an old plant from last year. I took inside and just barely kept alive during the winter and then brought it back out and it's just been exploding. And so I've been actually pulling some of the seed off 
and then putting it back in the pot but also harvesting off of that because the flowers you can eat those too and then this is some more bee balm I started from seed that I'm going to be transplanting I meant to do it uh, two days ago still haven't done it yet now it's too wet the uh, melons are all come along pretty good this is the uh, peach melon and you can see the plant the leaves everything about it is so much smaller than the cucumbers look at the flowers they're just here let me put my hand up there you can see they're just little tiny things and so hopefully we'll get some fruit because I'm really curious to try that that one and see if we even like it the lemon cucumber plants are looking really good I have yet to see any fruit on them yet mostly it's male flowers is all that I'm seeing which is normal but I'm getting cucumbers on my tender green burpless I've already picked a couple of them I think and so I think I think it's going to be exploding here soon with cucumbers and I'll probably have more than I know what to do with and then over here you'll see my Italian tomatoes and then here are the black Japanese now let's go back over here oh I want to show you a couple of things so here is also where I dry a lot of my seeds and I'm running out of paper bags we don't go shopping enough and so I usually I'll put them in paper bags so what I've got here is I have this rice bag I've got some seeds in there I can't remember which ones in here which ones I've put in there and then in here are some um, sting and nettle seed I just I've got a lot of uh, sting and nettle seed coming on so I just put them in the bags and then hang them in here for them to dry I want something like paper or fabric where it can get air so what I've, I'm using here is a pillowcase since I don't have enough paper bags and I uh, got lots of pillowcases I could also use some of my scrap fabric to make more bags like this for the seeds the uh, ashwagandha is looking really good in here I did transplant one of these into another pot to give it more space and may eventually put one of these in the ground in here I don't I just don't know yet so my basil doesn't might not look real pretty because yesterday I just came out and, and uh, harvested a bunch and put it on the dehydrator peppers are all you know doing pretty good I'm starting to see right over here I've got some Marconis forming and these are the jalapeno peppers that I got from uh, Ellen you know, that where I use the seed and I have actually used a couple of these in meals and then over here let's look again at these Chinese five colors so when I first saw these I was thinking well are they all going to be purple because I was under the impression that they actually came in as different colors but instead what they do is the first color they show is purple and then as they go along they they change they go I believe that it goes in this order cream then yellow then orange and then their finer final color is red as is most peppers will if you let them totally get ripe they will turn red even jalapenos we always think of jalapenos as being green but if you let them continue to stay on the vine they will eventually turn or on the plant they'll eventually turn red all right well it's a pretty brief garden update for this week since it's just too wet to do much outside oh yeah i was going to show you one more thing my blackberries right over here just outside the greenhouse are doing really good in fact i could have just videotaped them right from here instead of standing out in the rain because they're just right outside the window but i've got tons of blackberries on there and i cut a whole bunch of that plant back and like i if, you, if you're new you might not know this but those blackberries are in a pot but i'm pretty sure that they've grown through the pot and into the ground and there's a reason why we put them in the pot in that area why we won't plant anything with too long a roots right there and i'm going to talk about that eventually in another video why we won't do that and uh hopefully soon we will do that i don't even want to give away what it's going to be about uh but anyway hopefully we'll do that soon oh yes and one more thing i wanted to show you i try to remember all the little video clips i took i didn't think to get a video clip of my squash but it's still not really doing much yet it is starting to grow i am getting flowers and that's good but i did take a, a quick shot of where the tomatillos and the beans and the peas out there along that fencing that we've got at the at the east side of the garden and i am i you won't probably see it in the video clip but i do have some little tiny beans coming on and then my peas are exploding so i've been dehydrating a lot really happy with the dehydrated peas and then using a lot fresh like i said in my snow pea video that i'll go ahead and link right up here 
Okay, so there's my update for this week and hopefully next week I can do something a little more thorough and show you what's happening here. And hopefully by then the stuff in the front garden and my squash will be a lot farther along so I can show you how that's come along. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.